Today I want to take you through reading UTM coordinates uh, that's on your topo map. How to correlate that with your GPS and um, you know I've always found it difficult to use the longitude and latitude and especially correlating that with my uh, GPS. So using the UTM coordinate system is uh, really easy, it's not that tough at all and we'll take you through that. I'll explain to you what map datum is, uh, how to set this up on your GPS, uh, some things to use this in conjunction with your compass, the scales on the map. Uh, we'll take you a little bit through all of it and after you look at this little tutorial I have, you should be able to use this system. So we're going to take a closer look at that right now. The datum that's posted on here, and mine just happens to be off to the uh, side margin. Yours could be on the bottom. Some of the information it's going to give you is it's going to show you grid north as well as true north which is going to be indicated by the star and they happen to be one and the same. You can see there's zero degrees between the two. Also you're going to show magnetic north on here which is showing the declination to be at seven degrees which is going to be important when you're setting up your compass and this happens to be off to the west. So that means we're going to add seven degrees to our compass to if you have the ability to adjust declination on your compass or if not you're going to add it to it when you uh, look at the the final azimuth reading. Had this been off to the left which would be to the east you're going to subtract the seven degrees off that. Another thing I want to point out is you can look on your GPS and it's going to show you uh, your declination set. Actually when this map was made it was at seven degrees and it does change as the year goes on. So mine is reading at eight degrees so you're going to make sure you need to make sure that you have that set right between your compass and your, your GPS is going to automatically sense that. Uh, scales. This is going to show you the ratio here which is at one to twenty-four thousandths. And let's talk about scales a little bit. Now here at one and twenty-four thousand this is going to mean that if it's reading in centimeters that it's uh, one centimeter um, on the map to 24,000 centimeters on the ground or that could be one inch on the map to 24,000 inches on the ground or you could look at it as being uh, one inch equals 2,000 feet on the ground and the way that I got the 2,000 feet is I just took this and divided it by um, 12 and I got my 2,000 so that's 2,000 feet and if you wanted to break that down a little bit further if you're looking at mileage this 2,000 feet, um, there's 5,280 feet in a mile, so dividing that out, you're going to get 0 0.38, which is 38 hundredths of a mile, or that's you know, really close to 4 tenths of a mile. Also, another scale indication on here is going to give it to you in miles, uh, so you can look at that, and if you wanted to use a uh, a string or a ruler or anything or a piece of paper and just mark that out you know you have your half mile mark your four tenths of a mile you could use that to see what the distance is from one point to another also you have it in kilometers um, or a thousand meters whichever way you would like to look at that you could do that another key indication here you can see it has the NAD 83 and that's going to be key for setting that up on your GPS that could already you know read as well as WGS 84 or NADA 27 but you have to pay real close attention to that because it is key on setting it up in your GPS and it's going to tell you that this is on a thousand meters on the UTM this is also set up as USNG and the uh, MGRS which is going to be military grid reference system and this is going to be United States uh, national grid if I'm correct on that so some key things right there on setting that up. Also, I'm going to go up a little higher on some of the datum. And this is going to show you these contours are set up on 20 foot intervals right there. So I'm going to swing back over to the map. And you can see the contour lines on here. What that's going to mean is every time on these contour lines that you have one you go up 20 foot in elevation. Uh, if you happen to see the grid lines real close together that's going to indicate that you're getting really steep, uh, you know they're clipped or um, a really steep hill. 
So just remember that, you know, whatever it says, if it says it's set up on 20 foot intervals, that does mean that every time you go up on these little brown lines, that you're gonna see an increase in your elevation by 20 foot. Okay, let's go off to the side here. And you can see in the blue here that I have the UTM measurements. Also in the black here, I have the uh, longitude latitude measurements, which since I'm on the side here. Okay, I did change the camera elevation, so now I'm going to show you the uh, marks on the bottom. And you can see there, on the bottom I have the blue UTM uh, marks here. So you also have the uh, longitude elevations right there that's going to run, you know, from east to west. Blue here, this is uh, this actually the UTM measurement is going to read in meters. So here you would be reading at uh, 444,000 meters. And we're going to take these last three digits and we're going to show you how we're going to fill those in. So you have some good numbers that come up on your GPS as well. I'm actually going to raise you back up. And I'm going to move to a spot I have marked. And the way we're going to come up, you can see our grid lines running across here is square grid lines. So that's going to be a thousand meters um, west to east and north to south, thousand meters square. And to measure that, we're going to use different ways to do it. You could have some different mapping tools. And what I use um, is going to be a Romer scale or they're going to refer to it as a corner ruler. And I'm going to put this up here and hopefully you can make out. I'm going to put a piece of white paper behind it. So maybe you can make that out a little bit better. Um, we're going to be using the 1 in 24,000th scale, which is going to be at the top. Um, in between each number on the tick marks there. The intervals is going to be at 2 and I'm going to show you how we're going to we're going to take the eastern measurement and I'm going to row you back down here to look to see what these numbers were again. I'm going to do this slow so hopefully it stays in focus. but this particular spot that we were in it was going to read 444 and to get these smaller three digits here the more digits we have the more precise our accuracy is going to be so I'm going to move you back up to where this location was I had marked with the red X this Romer scale has a hole right here in the end so what we're going to do is we're going to place it right on the X and our grid line that's going to run north and south you can look and we can see that we have marked eight so that is going to be eight zero zero for that reading and you're always going to be reading from west to east and they call it eastern and I'm going to roll you back down here so we can look at that and remember we were on that grid line which was going to be 444 and we had a Romer scale on there. We were on the 8, so that's going to be 444800 for our first reading. Now we'll go back up here again. This is the spot we had marked with the X. Okay, let's get your second grid measurement. We'll put this Romer back up here right back over X and looks like we're going to be at um, our grid lines here there's a few more grid lines but this is our grid line do you can see by the blue UTM measurement and the line going over that this is going to be four the intervals are two four six eight so we'll call that four eight zero so the number is going to be and you're going to start 
at the uh, bottom grid line, work your way up north, and it happens to fall into this grid. So we're going to use the one on the bottom, which is going to be 4391, and we're at 480. So that's your second measurement. And let's, let's post this up here because you'll need to write these down, it's just a lot of numbers to remember. And the bottom we started off at 444, 800, and that was east. The uh, next second one we got was 4191, 480, and that was the north. So it's just a good idea to write those down. It's a lot of information to remember. One other thing, this was the, uh, I had this video up already once and I pulled it back down because a viewer did ask me a question and he was correct. Um, I got this map a week ago and um, requested this to be at a NAD 83 on the datum and I assumed the black grid lines on there was my UTM coordinates. It was a UTM coordinate but it was actually a NAD 27 that uh, just is embedded in this particular map that the USGS had and so that's something you really got to be aware of. I only had the tick lines so I had to draw in the blue NAD 83 grid lines to make this work out right. I could have set my GPS up for the NAD 27 and I'm going to check this out this weekend to make sure that these, if I did set up that up for NAD 27, that these would correspond with it. But what I did was I left it on the NAD 83, drew my blue coordinate lines back in there, my grid lines, and that's just something you have to be aware of. Uh, it's just a mistake that I made, so they did throw the readings off here a little bit. And um, that's just something to, to always be aware of when you do get these. And mytelpo.com, they were uh, really nice and helpful and really quick with working with me on that when I did come back and ask why these black grid lines were on there. And they explained it, you know, this was set up originally for the NAD. 27 and I changed it to the NAD 83. No big deal, but you got to be aware of stuff like that. So now let's take a look at how to make a, a Romer scale, uh, just a makeshift one, uh, should you not have the ones like that I use. Uh, I'll show you how to make one on paper.